Welcome to a code report algorithm video. In this video, we're going to be covering two algorithms from the STL algorithm library, std unique and std unique copy. For std unique, we have an algorithm with linear time complexity that removes all but the first elements from every consecutive group of equivalent elements in the range first to last. And for our algorithm declaration here, you can see we have one template type, the forward iterator. If you're not familiar with iterators, check out the C++ iterators video here, which discusses the difference between uh, the six different types of iterators in C++. And we have our two parameters that this uh, algorithm takes, first and last, and then the single returned uh, forward iterator. For std unique copy, it's the exact same thing, uh, but it has an extra parameter, an output iterator result, which uh, it's going to copy the uh, result from our algorithm. And note that we don't have forward iterators anymore. We have uh, two template types, input iterators and output iterators. So let's take a look at some examples using this or these two algorithms. So in our first example here, we have a vector of integers uh, being declared using an initializer list. And you can see that inside this, we have some consecutive elements with the same value. And so a couple notes here. Uh, one on this first line, we're using C17's uh, CTAD, the class template argument deduction, which means that we don't need to explicitly declare the type, the template type of our uh, vector and on the second line we're also using the erase uh, or remove erase idiom erase remove idiom and I've mentioned this in previous videos before but you can take a look at the link it'll be in the description down below uh, with a link to sort of a, a wiki book that talks about uh, C++ idioms so using this uh, we can call unique and it is going to return us an iterator that points to the uh, past the last element of re the returned uh, vector basically. So what this will do is it's going to remove any uh, duplicate adjacent elements. Um, so one of the twos is going to be removed, one of the threes is going to be removed, and then one of the twos is going to be removed here. And note if we don't make the call to erase it's just sort of going to uh, rearrange them and you're going to be left with some values at the end. So you want to be ma to make sure to erase all of the elements uh, in between the iterator passed or returned from unique and the end of our vector. And if we print this out, we're going to get the following. Uh, so one, two, three, one, two. So as I mentioned, the two, the three, and the two uh, are all removed. For our unique copy example, we have very similar code. Once again, we have our vector v with the same values. We then declare a vector of integers u to be empty at first. We can't use ctad here because we're not initializing it. And then we're just going to make a call to unique copy, passing the begin and uh, pass the last element iterators. And then our third parameter is going to be an output iterator, which we can get using the back inserter uh, utility function. And if we run this, we're going to end up with the exact same thing. Here we're printing out u instead of v this time. So uh, that's pretty great. And uh, the next thing I want to mention is that if we go to our CPP reference website and look at the functional library, we can see inside here that we've got some custom binary uh, predicates, uh, otherwise known as comparators in this case, that we can pass into our unique and unique copy algorithms to sort of mod modify the way that they work. So if we zoom in here, we can see that we have equal to, not equal to, greater, less, greater, equal, and less equal. And by default, um, if we go back to our original example, the way that unique works is it is uh, it works with this predicate, equal to. Um, so it removes any elements that are adjacent and equal to each other. But we can easily uh, replace this predicate with one of the other uh, binary predicates from the functional library. So uh, at the moment, this outputs 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. But if we change this uh, to greater, it's going to remove any elements where the element on the right uh, or the element on the left is greater than the element on the right. Uh, so for 1, 2, this doesn't meet that case. 1 is less than 2. 2 is equal to 2. 2 is equal to 2 is less than 3 and 3 is equal to 3. But the first case that we run into this is where uh, 3 is greater than 1. So it's going to remove 
the element on the right here. So it'll remove the one, and so we still have the uh, element with the value of three on the left, and we're comparing it against two. In this case, three is greater than two once again, and then three is greater than the last two as well. So the uh, element one, two, and two are all going to be removed, and when we print out v, we end up with the following. And in another example, if we replace the binary predicate uh, that's passed in here uh, to be less, we end up with the following. So uh, one compared with two, two is, uh, one is less than two, so we're gonna remove the two, and we'll continue to do this with the next two, the next three, the next three. Uh, and then once we are comparing the one with the one, they're equal, so one is not less than one. It's equal to one, obviously, so we're gonna keep the one, and at this point now we're comparing this one with this two. One is less than two, so we remove the two. And once again, one is less than two, so we remove this two. So we only end up with uh, one, one in this case. So uh, even though unique uh, typically isn't used in this way, it's just good to know that we do have the ability to pass in a custom binary predicate uh, comparator, and that'll basically modify the way that this algorithm works. So those are the examples, and um, if you want, you can stop watching this video now, but I do want to talk about sort of three other things which I think are um, good to know. And so the first one is going to be sort of the bash or Unix unique, and just is sort of like a historical, where did unique come from? The next thing is a comparison with the remove if algorithm, and the next is a comparison, a performance comparison with the uh, std set and std unorder set data structures in C++. So here we are in our bash terminal. I have a file called vector, and if we run this command, echo cat vector pipe uh, tr uh, backslash n space, it's basically taking each of the integer values, which is on a separate line in our uh, file vector, and then uh, translating the end line to just a space so that we can display the contents of this file just all on a single line. And as you can see, it just contains the integer values that we saw in our vector from our previous C++ solution. Uh, and what I want to show here is that uh, in Unix, or in Bash, there is a command called unique, uh, which is uh, uniq. Um, and if we run this, it's basically going to do the exact same thing that we saw from our C++ STL algorithm. So obviously Unix is a lot older than C++, so I imagine that the unique algorithm is based on this algorithm. I'm not sure if Unix slash Bash was, um, I guess, the program that popularized unique. But yeah, this is neat to know. And if you work in Linux or in sort of a terminal environment, whether that's on Mac or Linux, you have access to this. So uh, a common thing to do is to take some records, you sort them, and then you call unique. So pipe sort, pipe unique, and then you can do like pipe wc hyphen l to get the number of distinct uh, or unique records. Um, so yeah, good to know. Moving on to the next thing. The next thing to talk about is a comparison of unique with remove if, uh, specifically an implementation of unique uh, using remove if. So if you've seen my previous video where I covered std partition and std remove if, this will be slightly familiar. Uh, if you haven't seen that, uh, t take a look at it here. And basically in the std partition versus std remove if video, I talked about how if you only cared about the left part of your resulting partitioned data structure, you could actually use remove if. And I showed how you could implement that uh, using remove if. So this is very, very similar. Uh, if you think about what unique is doing, it is basically doing what remove if is doing, but it's taking a look at two elements at a time. Remove if typically only takes a look at a single element at a time. For instance, if you have a vector of integers, you can create a lambda that uh, returns true if the element passed to it is even or odd, and then it can remove all the even or odd elements uh, from that data structure. Here it's something very similar, but instead of just looking at a single element at a time, we take a look at neighboring elements, and we do some comparison between the two. And we can construct a lambda that uh, does that same comparison. So here we have uh, compare with previous lambda, and in, we are initializing a, a variable prev, which stands for previous, which is going to take the value of uh, the dereferenced first iterator, and uh, then here we're uh, just passing the element that we're cu currently going to be looking at. We need to make this a modifying uh, lambda, 
by using the mutable keyword because we're going to be modifying uh, the variable prev, which we've initialized. And then in the body of our lambda, we can see here we're setting a local p to be equal to the value that prev is. Then we're resetting prev to be equal to the value of the current element we're looking at. And then we're doing a comparison of e and p. And uh, because we're just sort of implementing the default behavior of unique, we're just returning uh, e is equal to p. And uh, if we pass this lambda to our remove if algorithm, and then we, for the first iterator, passed the sort of second element uh, in our first to last range, and then pass in L, which is our pass the last element iterator, uh, we can basically mimic the behavior of unique. And a couple notes about this algorithm, it's making use of two C++14 features. Uh, the auto in the parameter list of our lambda uh, makes this a generic lambda, and the auto at the uh, as the return type of our algorithm makes uh, use of the deduced function return type. So uh, you need to be compiling with C++14 in order for this algorithm to work. And if we swap over to the use case of this, we can see that uh, we have two vectors here with the same contents, and then we're just making two calls using our erase uh, remove idiom. Uh, one makes a call to unique, and one makes a call to my unique, and uh, then we print both of them, and the output for these is the exact same. So uh, pretty nifty, and I think it's useful to keep in mind when algorithms, sort of the underlying behavior uh, is very similar. So that's now sort of three algorithms, partition, unique, and remove if, that all have some sort of association with each other. And last but not least, a comparison between using vector plus sort plus unique uh, versus using just a set or an unordered set to determine the number of unique elements in a data structure. So uh, this is making use of quickbench.com, which is a C++ micro uh, microbenchmarking website. And I'm not showing all the code here. The code's not entirely too important. The point is, is that we're generating a thousand random integers and uh, we're using the range uh, between 1 and 10,000, so we're definitely going to have some duplicates. And then we are using two different methods to figure out the number of unique elements. And obviously there's different ways you can do this. The amount of duplicates can change, the total size of your data structure can change. Uh, the point that I want to highlight though is that um, given the parameters that I'm using, if we compare these, uh, vector is roughly two to three times faster than using a set. And theoretically, these both have the same time complexity because uh, sorting on a vector is going to be n log n, and doing an insertion on a set is going to be log n times uh, n different elements is going to be n log n. And therefore, we should see roughly the same um, runtime, but due to the fact that vector is a cache coherent data structure and set is not, vector is going to be much faster. And even for the parameters that I'm using, if we take a look at a uh, hash set, uh, unordered set, we see the same thing. Um, so obviously you can take the code. Um, I've left the links here and in the description down below. And you can mess around with this um, and probably find a case where the hash set is more performant. Uh, but the point here is is just to keep in mind um, when you're choosing data structures, depending on your use case, a lot of times you want to prefer the cache coherent data structures due to uh, the ability of cache coherent data structures to take advantage of cache locality, and therefore you typically end up with more performant code. So thanks for watching this video. It went a little bit longer than I hoped, but hopefully you found uh, the information in this useful. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.